When firms are making their profit maximizing decisions, they need to know how their costs vary with their production. Clearly as a firm's production increases, so does its cost. In this video, I will go over short run costs and their various measures in economics. In the short run, not all inputs can be varied. In contrast, all inputs can be varied in the long run. In most models of production, you'll come across in microeconomics, there are typically two inputs, capital and labor. In the short run, typically labor is variable and capital is fixed. In the long run, both capital and labor are variable. So this is just something to keep in mind in the background. And what I discuss in this video can be generalized to production models with more than two types of inputs. So we can represent a firm's short run costs by using a cost function. So I'm going to call that cost function capital C. And it is an increasing function in the quantity of output produced by the firm, which is lowercase q here. And this cost is the sum of two components. That first component is the firm's variable cost, which is also increasing in q. So you can think about a variable cost or an example of a variable cost being labor. So as a firm hires more workers, it's going to be increasing its production, but that's also going to be increasing its cost because that firm has to pay those workers a wage and the more workers they hire, the more they pay. So that's what a variable cost is. The second component of the total cost is the firm's fixed cost. So the fixed cost does not vary with the quantity of output produced by the firm. And an example of a fixed cost is a monthly lease on a building. So as the firm produces more output, the monthly lease on the building doesn't change. It's still going to be the same regardless of how much the firm produces. And that's why that's an example of a fixed cost. So the variable cost plus the fixed cost gives you the firm's total cost in the short run. And using this total cost function, we can derive four other cost functions that are going to be relevant to our analysis. So the first cost function that I would like to define here is the average cost function. And it is exactly what the name implies. It is the average of the firm's total cost. So we take the cost function and we divide it by the total quantity of output produced by the firm. And this will give you the average cost of the firm. Up next, we have the firm's average variable cost. And again, as the name implies, it is just the average of the variable cost. So we take the variable cost function and we divide that by the quantity of output produced by the firm. And that'll give you the average variable cost. So we have one more average cost to deal with. It's going to be the average fixed cost. And that's just the fixed cost divided by the quantity of output. And the last cost function that I'd like to go over is not an average cost. It is the marginal cost. And it is the derivative of the cost function with respect to the quantity of output produced by the firm. I'll be writing it like this. And you can interpret this as being basically as the firm increases its output by some small amount. The marginal cost tells you how much additional cost the firm incurs from that increase in production. Now I'd like to go over an example of a cost function. So this is the cost function that we'll be working with here. So it's 3q squared plus 75. So the first thing I want to do is identify the variable cost and then the fixed cost here. So the variable cost is the portion of the cost function that depends on Q. And that is just 3Q squared because the second component of this sum is just 75. That doesn't depend on Q. And then we also have the fixed cost. And that's the part of the cost function that does not vary with Q. And that would just be the number 75. So the fixed cost is equal to 75. So now let's move on to the firm's average cost. So remember the average cost is the cost function divided by the total amount of quantity, the total quantity of output produced by the firm. 
So that is going to be 3q squared plus 75 divided by q. So that is just 3q, so the q's cancel there, plus 75 over q. So that's the average cost. Up next we have the average variable cost. And that is the variable cost, which is 3q squared divided by the quantity of output. And that just gives us 3q. And the last average cost that we have to figure out here is the average fixed cost, which depends on q. So that's the fixed cost, 75, divided by the quantity of output q. And that's all there is to it. And the last cost function that we need to figure out here is, let me find a nicer color here. Let's do bright green here. So the last one is the marginal cost. So the marginal cost is just the derivative of the cost function, if you recall. So the derivative of the cost function is 6q. Right, so we just apply the power rule here. You bring down the two, and that gives you 6q, and the fixed cost drops out. So the marginal cost is just equal to 6q. So now let's go ahead and graph these cost functions. So we'll go ahead and graph that down here. I am going to put the quantity of output on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis will represent all of our different cost functions. So we're going to graph basically all of these guys right here. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so first let's go ahead and start off with something simple. Let's start off with the marginal cost curve. So the marginal cost curve, the function itself is just 6q. So that is going to be a straight line coming from the origin with a slope of 6. That is our marginal cost. Up next, we have our average variable cost. That's also really easy to graph. It is just 3q. It has half the slope of our marginal cost curve. So that is going to look something like this. And that is our average variable cost. So next, let's focus on the average fixed cost. So let's use, what color should I use here? Uh, let's use white, why not? Okay, so the average fixed cost is 75 over Q. So think about graphing one over X. What would that look like? It would look something like this. And instead of one over X, this is more like 75 over X. So this is going to be the average fixed cost. Okay, and we're almost done here. We just need to graph our average cost. So the average cost is the sum of the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. And you can see that here because the average variable cost is 3q, the average fixed cost is 75 over q, and our average cost is 3q plus 75 over q. So basically sum the average fixed cost curve and the average variable cost curve. And you'll find that the average cost curve is always going to be above the average fixed cost curve. And it's always going to be above the average variable cost curve. So we can illustrate it something like this. And this is our average cost curve. And the average cost curve has a nice property where its minimum intersects the marginal cost curve. And I'll go ahead and prove that in a later video. This is basically an illustration though of these cost curves using this simple cost function. Um, so this is just a quadratic cost function. Sometimes you'll have more extreme examples such as a cubic cost function. 
Um, so I can go over examples of that in future videos as well if you'd like. Just let me know in the comments what you'd like me to go over. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, make sure you like it. If you want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe, and I will catch you later.